Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here's an improper integral and everything consists of uh, natural logs and um, exponential functions. So we have the natural log of x divided by e to the power x plus e to the negative x dx. Interestingly, the result of this integral is exactly the result of another beautiful integral that I don't want to give um, the name of that integral. It has a name, but I'll say that until once we get to after evaluating that result. So uh, what it comes down to is essentially we just utilize um, some some other representations of the exponential functions. Then we write that as um, using some important values um, and a couple from a couple formulas that we'll be using, especially functions. Um, then that's the basic takeaway from here. Again, um, the result actually it gets me excited because um, it can it's exactly the same value. I believe that value comes down to negative zero point two six. I don't want to give like the explicit formula just yet until we get to there. Uh, but you know, this is going to be an exciting one. So let's actually just jump right in. So if we call this capital I, um, I'll just write that later, but let's write a note that specifically if we see that the following function, uh, one divided by e to the power x, add this with e to the negative x. Now, um, supposedly I can actually just multiply e to the negative x to both the top and bottom. So I have e to the negative x divided by, uh, so this will be one, and then add this with e to the negative two x. We can actually um, see that a series representation can be written as follows. So we have, um, to make some room, why don't I actually um, put this on the next slide? So the series representation can be written as the infinite sum from n is equal to zero of um, the alternating series, so negative one to the power n, of e to the power negative, um, and then the quantity two n plus one and times x, or if you want to write x and then negative x times two n plus one, it doesn't matter as long as it as long as you write it correctly, in other words. Cal calling this entire integral capital I, so let's actually put in that substitution. So we have um, zero to infinity, then ln of x, and so multiply this uh, with the substitution over here. So this is the um, same thing, infinite sum is equal to zero, then same thing as just like before. With convergence, we can actually just um, switch the integral and the uh, summation side, and the negative one to the power n, obviously that's the constant that does not matter with the, um, in the variable x, so that can also be moved outside as well. So now it's um, the alternating sum. The sum, the, um, the sum comes first, and then now we have our integral from zero to infinity of um, e, I'm gonna write, I'm just gonna move the e to the negative two n plus one times x first, then the um, ln of x. And so how can we proceed forward from here? So let's actually, we can actually perform a little u substitution. And these substitutions are very, um, really handy, especially when you're tackling like complex integrals like this. I don't mean complex in the in sense of like, you know, imaginary numbers, but you know, difficult and you know, in that, in that situation. So if supposedly, if we let u equals, um, so, 2n plus 1 and then times x, then if I can just solve for x on its own, because eventually we just have to put this back into a new substitution for in the world of u. So that means x is going to equal u divided by 2n plus 1. Then if I do the differentiation both, differentiation both sides, so dx is just equal to 1 divided by uh, 2n plus 1, then du. And so interestingly, no bounds are going to be um, changed. It's fixated the way it is, even if you just plug everything back in. So we're going to focus on just this integral for now. So the zero infinity, so I'm, I'm just writing the same thing over here. So negative 2n plus 1x, then ln of x dx. So now we can write this in terms of u. So plug in everything for the substitution of new bounds. So um, this is still just going to remain the same. Then next, this will be e to the negative u. And then now we just plug in the whatever x is um, ln of, so this is u divided by 2n plus 1. Then afterwards, we just put in that dx substitution, which is 1 divided by 2n plus 1, and then times du. Of course, this is a constant. And so with that being said, we can actually just move that outside of our integral over here. All we're left with the integrand is just this inside over here. So. Uh, 1 divided by 2n plus 1, and this whole integral, 0 to infinity, e to the negative u, ln of uh, u divided by 2n plus 1, and then du. So it doesn't look like we can actually exactly directly compute this integral over here, but what we can do is we can actually apply some logarithmic properties, and because it's under, the argument is under the division, 
we can use that with the subtraction of natural logs, but also using linearity, we can actually just use a little bit of distribution. So after performing all of this, we're gonna have this following. So one divided by two n plus one with this parentheses, so this is zero, infinity, e to the negative u, then multiplied by ln of u du, then we do perform that subtraction over here. And don't forget, uh, well, actually, I'll get to that step just in a sec, but now let's just write the integrals we want. Zero, infinity, then e to the negative u, then ln of 2n plus 1 du. Now what we can do here is we can actually perform the distribution. What this comes down to now is, um, so this is 2n plus 1, then multiply the integral, 0 to infinity, e to the negative u, ln of u du, okay? And ln of 2n plus 1, that's still a constant, so I could actually just factor that outside. So this is ln 2n plus 1, all this being divided by 2n plus 1, multiplied by the integral, then proper integral, and then e to the negative u du. Okay, so there are some calculations that, um, simple calculations we can make. Um, specifically, the first integral over here, if you just, you know, obviously just apply u sub, then we have negative e to the negative u evaluated from zero to infinity, but we can clearly see that um, the value of this is actually just going to equal positive one. So that's nice. But all we have left here is um, now e to the negative u ln of u. So this is actually a special, um, the result is special because it's actually equal to the negative euler mascheroni constant or lowercase gamma. And I actually proved this video back a long, long, long time ago. So if you wanna check the whole um, derivation of that, I'll leave that link in the description below. So we have our values. So now we can actually just simply plug this back in and see that we actually have our improper integrals um, that we need to solve. So from here, so now I'm gonna rewrite this integral again. So, um, sorry about block. I'm gonna rewrite this integral again. So um, we have that the um, zero to infinity of e to um, negative two n plus one quantity then times x ln of x dx. Simply now we just said that this is, um, this is gonna be the negative euler mascheroni divided by two n plus one, then subtract ln of 2n plus 1, then divided by uh, 2n plus 1. And so with that, now we can actually just conclude that we have um, evaluated our integral over here. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Uh, specifically of this improper integral, we evaluated because now, now that's out of the way. Now we got to put this back into our infinite alternating sum, which um, hopefully now that make things a little bit easier for our um, sake. So now we have that so far capital I is going to equal two. So I'm gonna factor out the negative um, euler mascheroni constant from over here. So negative uh, lowercase gamma, then we have our infinite sum equals zero, the alternating sum, so negative one to the power n divided by two n plus one. And then now I'm just going to um, now distribute the negative uh, one to the power n into here for, for that sum. So this will be minus um, now the infinite sum n is equal zero of negative one to the power n multiplied by ln of two n plus one, all this being divided by two n plus one. Now all that's left is we gotta figure out how to calculate <laughs> these infinite sums. No worries, as mentioned, there's actually some special values, but let's actually recall some of these little um, functions that we're going to need to help um, to help add in to the information that we want to you know validate. So. We know that specifically by definition of the Dirichlet beta function. So I write this as uh, beta of s. This is actually going to equal the infinite sum of, um, this is the alternating series, negative one to the power n divided by um, two n plus one, uh, and that's the quantity to the power s, uh, such that for the real part of s is actually going to be greater than zero. Now with this Dirichlet beta function um, written down, so let's actually um, differentiate both sides. And this, this is actually gonna be very helpful eventually. So after doing so, um, when we have that, we're differentiating in respect to S. So let me first write beta prime of S. So if we think about this, this is um, a constant to a power variable. So it's like a standard A, the derivative of A to the power X. So with that, um, with that trying to find a derivative, it's basically just a to the x, then times the ln of a, but then you actually, actually multiply the exponent x, which in this case, in this situation for s, it's actually just going to equal um, negative one, since because obviously we have that this is under the denominator, and if you were to write this as like uh, in full, well, everything under just uh, one whole line instead of a fraction, so that's the, the distribution of the negative. So now this will become just negative, and then multiply by the infinite sum, and then is equal zero, 
of the alternating negative one to the power n, then multiply by ln of two n plus one, all this being divided by um, two n plus one quantity to the power s. And so with this, so let's actually now, um, if you pay attention closely with um, the similar formulas over here, Simply, all we can do is we can actually just plug s equals 1, and we see that uh, everything matches exactly what we have. So, of course, with beta equal to 1 and beta prime equal, um, beta of 1 and then beta prime of 1, so there's actually some special values. Um, beta of 1 is going to equal specifically pi over 4. As you can see simply that um, this is actually the expansion of the arctangent of 1, or in other words, pi over 4, Leibniz's formula for pi, in other words. But another formula, um, specifically, if we were to plug in um, beta prime of one, and this is actually a, I'd like to say this is a difficult computation for me personally, but um, it, it's written as follows. So we have pi over four multiplied by the uh, euler mascheroni constant, lowercase gamma, plus two ln of two, add this with three ln of pi, and then subtract with four ln of uh, gamma of 1 over 4 and then yep one more parentheses okay so these special values um obviously i actually did the calculation for um pi over 4 liveness for the pi um i'll leave that link in the description below if you want to check that out uh, this one's actually a little bit difficult to do the computation um well this was first derived by the uh, mathematician um carl malston sorry if i said his last name wrong um, the computation can actually work by using um, Cummer's Fourier series for the, log the logarithm of the gamma function. Um, there's actually a lot of sources out there if you actually want to read a little more into it. I'm not really going to go over into these whole calculations. It's just that it, it's there for there. So anyway, we have these calculations. So now we can actually just plug this back into the substitution for i. So now in this situation, i is going to equal, um, so it's negative, um, or the negative lowercase gamma substitute this so um well specifically i'll first write this formula that um so far i is supposedly going to be uh, lowercase gamma multiplied by beta of one then we subtract this with beta prime of one and so with this now we'll actually plug in our substitution of our um, special values so negative gamma then multiplied by pi over four and then all this being multiplied by so i'm gonna have to you know put this in the next line eventually so this will be uh, lowercase gamma, add this with 2 ln of 2, then add this with 3 ln of pi, then subtract uh, 4, then ln of gamma of 1 over 4. And so now, just by noticing that um, if we were to dist um, distribute the pi over 4 into these gammas, then we see that they actually cancel each other out. And so then we would have, um, this is actually supposed to be a plus over here because of the whole negative from here. Sorry about that. Um, that's plus here. Okay, now everything will come together. So these two terms will cancel. So now it's just all distributing the rest of the other terms. So it's pi over four, then multiplied by two ln of two plus uh, three ln of pi, then subtract four ln of um, gamma of one over four. And then we can actually, you know, leave the answer like that if we want to, but we can actually um, just simplify things even further. So after you do all the simplification, we're going to get that the final answer, capital I, is going to equal to pi over 4, multiplied by natural log of the entire argument, which is 4 pi q divided by um, gamma to the fourth power of 1 over 4. And just like that, this is complete. And um, as I said that about the, um, I don't know the exact value exactly, but I know it comes down to negative 0 0.26, somewhere around that range. Um, if I got that wrong, then I'll just um, make that edit in the video. But um, this actually has a, the result of this value is actually special because there's a beautiful integral known as Vardy's integral, which is written as the integral from pi over four to pi over two of the natural log of the natural log of tangent x dx. And if you actually solve all that computation out, it's actually gonna come out to this exact value, which some people like to call Vardy's integral a beautiful result according to what I found on Wolfram Alpha. But um, interestingly, I actually did a video back in the past, way, way long, long time ago, of a similar format of Vardy's integral, except the bounce was from zero to pi over two, and our integrand was um, ln of ln of cotangent of x dx. 
And as it turns out from as you watch from that video, the same the result of that is exactly just like this. So I like to call the video that I did from before as like another construction similar to Vargas Integral. So um, if you want to check out more on Vargas Integral, then um, feel free to do so. It's actually really interesting. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.